and gentlemen, <clears throat> I hope you are all having a wonderful day. My name is Trisha with Insectopia, and we are on day 14 of Invertober. So I've been live streaming every single night at 10 p.m. Eastern, except on Sundays where I live stream at 4 p.m. Eastern. And we've been doing all types of different um, educational invertebrate type things. So on Mondays we do live animals, Tuesdays we talk about tarot, Wednesdays and Fridays we get to talk about um, line drawings, Thursdays and Sundays we get to do brand new sketches with my microscope and pencil, and then on Saturdays we spread Death's Head Sphinx Moss, and this happens on repeat for the entire month of October. And I am really excited about it. We also have to pick one day to be a um, to be like an uh, a collection show all like a show and tell where I can show you each one of my drawers and we can talk about all the different specimens I have. Maybe go over some stories. Um, I think that that would be a lot of fun for you and. Um, uh, you'll be able to see the insects that we haven't sketched yet. And you'll have an idea as to maybe what types of insects you want to sketch in the future. Or even see underneath the microscope. So, um, this is the graphic for Invertober. Um, and there's a Death's Head Sphinx Moth on it because we spread those every Saturday. Yay! Alright, thank you so much. So... Um, today, I thought that we would start off with some of the hoppers. I know during our last, um, during our last kind of ink, um, line drawing, let's see, yeah, during our last kind of, uh, ink drawing session, we talked a little bit about, there's a cat scratching a ceiling above me, I guess. I'm sorry, I didn't expect it. Um... So, we talked a lot about a variety of different types of insects, and we talked about, like, which ones we wanted to sketch next week, and, and then I got the, um, somebody during that session said, hey, we should do the hoppers, but we didn't have enough time to do all of the hoppers together. Sammy? Sammy. She didn't break anything. Sometimes my kitties get the zoomies, and it's my fault. I haven't put some of my specimens away yet from previous sessions that we've um, drawn and seen. And so when I come downstairs, the cats get all excited, and they want to come downstairs too. Except that um, I have specimens out, so we have to be really careful. And I heard her jump behind me, so that's why we went back there and fixed it. But that is fine. So we're going to get going, and we're going to sketch some of these hoppers. I'm going to shrink me just a little bit, so I'm not in the way. I feel like somehow I got bigger. Yoo-hoo! All right, now I'm tiny. I love it. This is about the size I need to be because I want you to see my hands and my sketch more than um, I need you to see my face, right? I think so. So, um, the first insect that we're going to do is the family name is Cercopidae, and our common name for this type of insect is a frog hopper. And I believe I'm double checking because I don't want to tell you anything wrong. All right, I am correct. Yahoo! All right. So, our cercopidae, or the frog hoppers, when they're immature, they're actually called a spittle bug. And they live, they actually produce. I always thought that it was spit. 
But then I Googled it and learned that it's not actually spit. It comes out the other end and they bubble it. They essentially bubble their own pee and they create like a little bubble nest out of it. And that's what they live in. And they defend themselves against predators because nobody wants to go into that. Grody. All right. And this is what they look like as an adult. So we're seeing the head up here, our compound eyes, the pronotum. We've got here, these are our wings. Um, and this is the overall dorsal view of a frog hopper. It doesn't have, admittedly, it doesn't have a whole lot of characteristics on it. It's not like it has a whole bunch of hairs or like... Um, a whole bunch of designs here. It's a little bit more plain, but that's okay. Cercopids, though, naturally are going to have all different types of designs. They're going to have all different colorations. So um, you should definitely go and like look up some of the uh, some of the really beautiful colorations of frog hoppers. Now, when frog hoppers are immature, I mentioned that their names are spittle bugs. They live amongst their own bubble home. And then eventually, when they become an adult, they move out of that home and they gain wings, the ability to fly, and they have these wonderful jumping legs. All right, so we've got this ink line done up here on my adult, but I also have a couple of more pictures down here on the bottom. I have this image of the head head on. Now the head, looking at it head on, is not going to give us very many defining characteristics, but if we look at the tibia down here, that's what these are. This is actually how you determine these two families apart. Because as an adult, they look very similar. They're both from the same order. They both have jumping legs. They have four wings. They have very similar colorations. And they even live in the same environments. So how do we tell them apart? We look at their hind legs. This is the tibia and then the tarsi of their hind legs. Frog hoppers only have two, maybe three spines, but mostly two spines on the tibia. And then at the end of the tibia, they have this circlet of spines where it completely circles the end of the tibia. Whereas over here on my leaf hoppers, if we look at their hind legs, they don't have that circle of spines at the end of the tibia, but they do have a double row of spines on the jumping leg. I'm sorry if you can hear that. One of my cats has decided that it is time to dig through the bag. So we're gonna go ahead and and give our um, and give our leaf hopper sketch a go with this ink. Um, we've got antenna here that are very very thin, um, and our leaf hoppers do have little ocelli. I know that there are a handful of you that really like to watch out for the ocelli and like to make sure that they get sketched when they're there. So, my leaf hoppers and my frog hoppers have ocelli. Their ocelli are slightly different, so the leaf hoppers, the ocelli are pretty separated. Whereas in my frog hopper, at least the one that we sketched, the ocelli were really close together. Now, I'll admit, I'm not sure if that's the case for all frog hoppers and leaf hoppers, but from the specimens that I was using to sketch these guys, that was a difference. So for me, to know if that was a true difference, I would have to look at a whole bunch more leaf hoppers and frog hoppers. Because just from my smaller sample size, I can't be sure. All right, so we have these front legs here. And now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to give them, essentially this is some of the wing venation. But it is also, it also can be kind of the colored striping on the wings here. Um, they will sometimes have really beautiful colors on their wings. All 
right, so I think that's about right. And so we have both our frog hoppers and our leaf hoppers, and we know their difference based off of their hind legs. Now, if I flip our piece of paper over, we have two more types of hoppers. Now, all of these hoppers are what we consider true bugs. They're in the family Hemiptera. Um, so they have a piercing and sucking mouth part. Now, tree hoppers generally have what we call an enlarged pronotum. So if we look right here at the head and then look kind of behind the head, um, you can see that this section here is that first section of the thorax, except that it's really, really tall and it's really, really long. It goes all the way back like two-thirds of the way past the length of the wings, right? So that is an incredibly long pronotum. And this isn't the only species that's like this. In fact, tree hoppers, as an entire family, they have enlarged pronotums. Now this one actually projects forward like a spine, whereas this one is more like a double um, kind of flat space here. But in tropical areas, if you want to see some really crazy looking insects, look up tropical tree hoppers because they can have pronotums that kind of come up and they have like little spheres and little balls and little spines. Some of them look like they even have antlers. It's really, really awesome. So um, I have never seen one of those in person, so I don't have any of my own personal images, but I do have my own sketches of tree hoppers that I've collected. Now, a lot of times, tree hoppers are camouflaging into their environment using this, um, this adaptation of this really large pronotum. So, for instance, um, this tree hopper here with the thorn coming up off of the front of the head, that's going to be a tree hopper that you can find regularly around rose or raspberry bushes. Rose and raspberry also have thorns, right? So not only does my tree hopper have a thorn on its pronotum, but the plants that it's feeding off of and the plants that it spends most of its time on are um, plants that have thorns, and he has a thorn. All right, so I'm getting my head figured out. I'm going to come in here and add my front leg. I left a couple of spaces blank with the pen so that this front leg would fit through. So we've got my front leg. We're going to add our middle leg here. Now... If we look at the hind leg, you might get confused if you're trying to find like a certain number of hairs or a row of hairs on the hind leg. The characteristic for tree hoppers does not have to do with the hind legs like it does in frog hoppers and leaf hoppers. The characteristic in tree hoppers is that enlarged pronotum. Um, they do have kind of hairy or spiny hind legs, um, so that can get you confused a little bit with leaf hoppers. Just make sure you're always checking these legs. I'm also going to add some of these wing venations. Just so that we have some detailing that says, hey, this bottom area here is also a wing. All right, so we've got our tree hop, uh, we've got leaf hoppers, we have frog hoppers, we have tree hoppers, and then finally at the very end, we have an insect called a plant hopper. Now, plant hoppers also have jumping legs. They also have long sucking mouth parts. They are also in the family Hemiptera, or they're in the order Hemiptera. But this isn't just one family of insect. This is actually what we call a super family of insects. It's the entire super family of Fulgoroidea. 
It does include Fulgority, but it also includes a bunch of small families like Anthocantholonidae and all types of stuff. I don't know if that's actually a name. Acantholonidae, I think, is its name. Let me look it up really quick. So I'm looking up the Fulgoroidea, and then I'm going to... Acanalaneidae. There isn't a TH. Acanalaneidae is another one. But there is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There are 13 families in this super family. But... Those families aren't super specious, so there are a good number of them, but it's not like there's a huge number of them. So when we're looking straight just at these Fulgoroidea, um, at these plant hoppers, our defining characteristic, the characteristic that we know, if we see this thing, we know it's a plant hopper, it's the fact that, well, first of all, that piercing and sucking mouth parts means it's in hemipteran. It's got these membranous wings and these jumping wet legs. It generally gets us to, fro to a hopper. And then we're trying to figure out which hopper it is, essentially. Well, uh, plant hoppers, their antennal base, their antennal socket will always be underneath the antenna. And then I want to make sure I give it some of this wing venation. Which are not only long veins down, but they are also cross, there's also a number of cross veins. Um, our mouth part for the plant hoppers is actually way down here in between the legs. So there's this point here actually continues on. That's a piercing and sucking mouth part. Plant hoppers have the ability to pierce and drink if, from plants. All right, so here's the deal. I'm going to go through. I'm going to finish erasing the pencil markings in our hoppers. I'm going to look for any places that I might still need to ink. I'm going to go in and add a little bit of detailing. Maybe in the compound eyes, for instance, I'm going to add some cross hatching. But um, if I don't have many people hanging out with me today, I'm going to end early. So we've been live streaming for about 20 minutes. We've gotten four insects done. In fact, we've gotten all the hoppers done. So that actually makes me pretty happy. And I just want to make sure that I'm also leaving enough room for other things in my life. So um, if you join us, let me know and I will stick around and I will answer your questions and I will continue drawing and we will have even more fun. But... 
If you don't, we are going to be ending early today, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, and guess what? Those of you who are... Those eyes are ugly. Let me fix that. Um, so those of you who are watching this after the case or after the time, um... That's kind of lucky for you, because instead of watching an hour and a half, you're probably only going to be watching approximately a 20-30 minute video. Alright, we are flipping it over. I'm going to erase the sketching on our tree hopper. Oops! I forgot to give our tree hopper the bottom of its body and it looks like the outline of the wing. There we go. Now it'll be better. So that is our beautiful tree hopper. And then moving on down to our plant hopper. I'm going to erase all of this pencil and see what our see what our pen looks like. Oopsies. Don't mess up the paper, Trisha. He's pretty cute. There are a couple of places that I want to fix up that the line accidentally went through because I wasn't expecting it and those this and that and the other thing, but that is perfectly fine. Now, I think just a quick definition of the frog hoppers, leaf hoppers, tree hoppers, and plant hoppers is actually pretty good for one live stream. And since I don't have very many people asking questions and interacting with me today, we are just going to be signing off. So... That's all right with me. I live stream every night. Maybe we will have more people in tomorrow. So let's see. Thank you so much for having a great time with me. Um, I hope you enjoyed hearing about the different families of hoppers, whether they be plant, leaf, tree, or frog hoppers. Um, we are live streaming every single night. Feel free to join me on a Monday when we're doing live animals, Tuesday for tarot, Wednesdays or Fridays for ink, Thursdays or Sundays for pencil, and Saturdays for spreading moths. Um, I also have... There it is. All right. I also have out school classes. I teach weekly insect studies and junior bug club all over the world. Students um, from, from the United States, from Canada, from China. I have students all over the world, and I really enjoy teaching them about bugs. And if you know a student who's age 5 to 8, 9 to 12, and really enjoys bugs, get them involved in my class and... Then they can also meet other bug lovers, and it's so much fun. Now, right over here, that's my YouTube channel. It's just a reminder to make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel. And go ahead and hit that notification bell so that you know when I'm going live in the future. Down here, that's my QR code for my PayPal. That lets you be able to tip me if you would like. If you learned something new today, if you're going to share that knowledge with people that you know, if you're excited about something that you saw or you want to share, go ahead and do that and drop me a couple of dollars. It really, 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 really makes a difference in my life, and I super appreciate every dollar that you guys um, have already donated to me. It means the world to me. Now, right about here... That is at Insectopia 2015, and um, that is my Facebook tag and my Instagram tag. So if you're looking for me at Insectopia, you're probably not going to find me. That's because I'm at Insectopia 2015. Make sure you remember the numbers. Don't forget. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your night. Um, I hope that you have, those of you out there who are um, going to be watching this in, in the future appreciate that it is a shorter live stream. Have a wonderful rest of your night and stay buggy!